Hello everyone, I'm Jordana Van of Raven Light Holistic Healing and welcome to Shark as a Totem. Because there are nearly 500 known species of sharks, this video is going to be about shark in general as a totem rather than about uh, any one specific kind of shark. So what I will be addressing will be the qualities that are common to most sharks and therefore most shark people, but not the characteristics specific to certain species. I'm also going to focus primarily on the sharks who actively hunt their prey rather than the gentle filter feeders like the whale shark. Uh, now, you don't have to have a particular kind of shark as a totem. You may simply be a shark person. But if you do resonate with a specific species and would like to know what those unique characteristics mean for you, you are welcome to schedule an animal totem uh, interpretation session with me by visiting my website, which is www ravenlightholistichealing.com. I will be happy to talk with you about your specific shark and how that resonance is reflected in your personality and the challenges you face in this lifetime. You might also wish to do this if you'd simply like more information on sharks as totem animals in general, because as is true with most creatures, there is so much more to sharks' wisdom than I could cover in a single video, so I selected only what I felt were the most uh, important features to share here. So let's start with the most obvious thing first, shall we? Sharks are apex predators at the top or near the top of the marine food chain, and they scare the living daylights out of a lot of people. They may even scare the living daylights out of people for whom shark is a personal totem. It is actually quite common for our totem to be something that scares us. So if this is you, you're not alone. Usually the creatures that frighten us the most don't just frighten us on a physical level. Say they've got big teeth or claws or they're creepy crawly and venomous, but on a spiritual one. We are actually frightened of the qualities that the creature represents, even if we don't know this on a conscious level. If shark is your totem and you're terrified of sharks, it's a strong possibility that you've got that unique ability to see clearly into people's inner darkness and that this concerns you. Two, you are likely to find yourself observing someone's inner mess in an almost detached and clinical fashion rather than feeling overwhelmed by pity. If you've got a loving heart, and most shark people do, this might worry you a bit. I mean, aren't we supposed to feel sorry for people in pain and suffering instead of intrigued? And so you might go the opposite direction, going out of your way to seem understanding and affected, which really only leaves you feeling constantly at the mercy of everybody else's emotions and keeps you from truly being you. If everyone spent their entire lives letting the emotions and whims of others dictate who they became and what they did with themselves, we would have stayed stuck in the dark ages. Same if we all succumb constantly to pity. Pity doesn't help anyone, guys. Pity keeps you stuck. Empathy, where you recognize that someone is in crummy circumstances and you feel compassion for them, but you don't buy into the idea that the situation is because they are victims, is what helps people rise from their troubles and connect with their highest path. Mature shark people who absolutely refuse to let others tell them what they can and cannot do, who can't tolerate weakness, and who refuse to be victims, can inspire people to find their own power simply by being themselves and going after what they themselves desire. Now, the shark is also an apex predator that resides in water. In metaphysical speak, water is representative of emotions, and you as a shark person are likely to have extremely intense emotions, and they often seem to come out of nowhere. This, too, might scare the heck out of you. If you're a shark person who isn't freaked out by sharks, you may yet notice that the other people out there seem to be freaked out by you. Shark attacks are intense, and sharks are ruthless in their pursuit of prey. Shark people are incredibly intense, and they often appear to seem ruthless in the pursuit of what they want. Two, here is a critter that could be anywhere in the ocean. How do you protect against that if you're a diver or a swimmer or a surfer or even a wader? You just have to take your chances and hope there isn't a shark out there. So here we have this unpredictable creature that could arise suddenly from the depths and eat you alive, even if you're doing all of the things you're supposed to do to protect yourself. 
the with a shark the only real way to protect yourself is not to get in the water in the first place and any of you guys who are going to make sharknado comments you can keep those to yourself so we're going to make one of the many comparisons to Scorpios here. Now, it is not always the case that certain animals tend to be more frequently associated with certain astrological signs. But this is one of those situations in which I have observed a clear trend. When a client has a shark totem, they often have a strong Scorpio placement in their chart, either having a Scorpio sun or ascendant or moon or Mars or Venus, or they may have a ton of stuff in the eighth house, which is ruled by Scorpio. Now you can easily be a shark person without a single drop of Scorpio in your chart. It's just a little less likely. So I'm going to talk about Scorpio energies a bit in this video simply as a way of better explaining sharks qualities as a totem. Again, you don't have to have any Scorpio in your chart for Shark to resonate with you. Now, Scorpios intrigue and fascinate us because they are deep and mysterious and sensual. Scorpio is a water sign, and water is not only the element of emotion, but of intuition and dreams and certain aspects of sexuality, the very definition of mysterious. You don't truly know what is beneath the surface with a Scorpio, but we are really drawn to find out. And yet... And Scorpio friends and viewers, I really, truly love you to bits. But just like with our water-dwelling shark, there is no such thing as completely safe with a Scorpio. Scorpio emotions are intense, and they can seem to come out of nowhere. And most Scorpios would agree that their first response to any perceived slight or act of disloyalty is to attack. So here you are, swimming along and thinking you're okay, and wham! Your Scorpio goes on the offense for a reason you likely don't understand and then tears you to little bitty bits. Shark people, a big reason you intimidate others so fiercely, aside from the aura of power you possess, how utterly driven you are, and how insensitive you can appear to emotional needs of others, is simply that you are absolutely freaking lutely unpredictable. No matter how hard they try, no one really knows how to predict what will or will not set you off. So they're going to be eternally nervous when you're around, no matter how well they may think they know you or how loving you appear. Now, even with the recent uptick in shark attacks, particularly in the U.S. and Australia, the odds of being attacked by a shark are still astronomically low, somewhere in the order of one in several million, depending on what kind of water activity you are doing. Um, if you're surfing, it's, it's higher than if you're waiting, for example. But even if you're bitten, your likelihood of dying from the bite is still only 6%. In fact, the most frequently cited statistic indicates that you are more likely to be struck by lightning or crushed by a vending machine falling on top of you than bitten by a shark. Sharks don't want to hurt you. They really, truly are more frightened of us than we are of them, and we're not their preferred food. Shark people don't want to hurt you. Overall, they're actually very sensitive souls. They're very easily wounded, and they aren't going to go out of their way to do anything to you. It's just that if you happen to be in their way, just like the swimmer who happens to be where the shark was hanging out to feed, they aren't going to derail their plans on your behalf. If you're in their way, you're likely to become collateral damage, and they probably weren't even really conscious that you were there. So let's talk about exactly what it is that makes sharks such incredible hunters and how this impacts shark people. First and foremost, sharks have an amazing assortment of keen senses. Most of us are aware of the shark's legendary sense of smell. We've all heard that sharks can detect a small quantity of blood in the water from miles away. But what you might not know is that sharks can smell, as one biologist calls it, in stereo. Each of their nostrils can detect scents separately, which allows them to tell precisely which direction a scent came from, so they can follow it erroneously back to its source. In metaphysical terms, scent is linked to gut sense, to a deep knowing about the truth of things. One way we see this reflected in the real world is in pregnant women, who often first suspect they are pregnant because suddenly they can smell everything. It's often said that the reason that this occurs is because the insanely heightened sense of smell helps them protect their baby, which is resting at gut level. You can tell by smell alone if meat or dairy has gone off, or if a fruit or vegetable is no longer fresh, for example, preventing you from ingesting it, becoming sick, and bringing harm to your child. So in the real world, scent can tell us if something is healthy or toxic for us. 
in the metaphysical world, our gut sense tells us the same thing. When we are talking about totem animals, an animal with extreme olfactory sensitivity indicates that the human that resonates with this animal has an extremely sharp gut sense, who can tell important things about a person or a situation just by the way they feel. Taken one step further here, saying someone can smell blood in the water is a way of saying someone can sense weakness, vulnerability. And this ability can be used in multiple ways depending on the individual and their relative degree of mental and emotional health. A good rule of thumb, never act upon what you perceive as a gut impression unless you are in a genuine place of calm. We'll talk about exactly why this is so critical in a few minutes, but for now, let's talk about how a shark person might use their sense of someone else's vulnerability. So first, the more uh, obviously loving and healing way. Shark people make incredible healers and physicians because they can sense where someone is most deeply wounded on a physical and emotional level, and because they don't shy away from pain. It tends to intrigue more than repel them. For this reason, they can hone in on exactly what's wrong with you, whether this is a particular organ or system in your body that's malfunctioning, or a negative thought pattern, an emotional pattern, uh, that takes up most of your consciousness day after day. Once it's determined precisely what's wrong with you, healing can begin. Now, this healing may not necessarily take a comfy feeling form. When we think of sharks, thanks to overzealous media portrayals and movies, and to the fact that, yeah, shark attacks are very scary things, what most often comes to mind is this rabid, toothy killing machine roaming the deep, hungry for our innocent blood. Put in the simplest metaphysical terms, with water representing the realm of emotion and the unconscious mind, the shark is a creature with the ability to see clearly through the murk of our unconscious, to hone in on where we are most deeply vulnerable, and to tear us apart. Most healing, and inevitably most personal empowerment, begins with some kind of destruction, with an experience that often makes us feel as though we are being torn apart. Someone or something has to bring us into direct contact with the deepest, darkest, festering parts of ourselves in a way that we simply cannot escape unless we choose to change. So held there in that airless deep and seemingly inescapable pain, we learn how to breathe through these terrifying emotions and face our shadow so that it can be transmuted into light. A shark person in their role as a healer can facilitate this for us. Again, it probably won't feel good, but it is no less an act of love and healing. So what happens when a shark person has taken the healer's path, but is not in a calm, healthy, emotional place themselves? A shark healer who is a mess themselves will still be able to tell you where you're vulnerable, but rather than help you, they can use that knowledge to exploit you for their own gain, whether this is financially or emotionally or physically. Shark people are powerful personalities in every way, and we do tend to believe that if a powerful, powerful person says they can help us, that we should let them. But guys, just because someone is especially psychic or possesses healing gifts does not mean that they are mentally or emotionally healthy and will use their gifts in a truly loving way. This is a huge myth when it comes to spiritual work. Trust your own gut before giving a healer permission to help you. And if they don't ask for permission, if they just say, oh, you need this and I'm going to do it, or if they pressure you when you've already said no, that's a major red flag. I was on the receiving end of this kind of experience, not once, but twice. It took me a while to figure it out. And even now, I'm a little shocked that those individuals consciously used me in that way. Were they bad people? No, they were wounded. And in their woundedness, they became deeply frightened and confused. And in this chaotic state, they acted in ways that wrecked havoc instead of healing. One of them at least really did think they were doing the right thing. But if you truly want to help others, healing or intuitive gifts alone are not enough. You have to first do the tough work of healing yourself, of being willing to see yourself as clearly as you see others. If you're a shark person and you're considering going into a healing field, it is absolutely imperative that you do an honest assessment of your own wounds and your own history and make healing that pain, whatever pain exists, a priority. 
Otherwise, when all of those vulnerable individuals begin finding their way to you, you might find yourself acting in ways that keep those individuals feeling vulnerable, rather than helping them find their own sense of power. As a sharp person, you have the ability to do both. To influence people to see the world as an unrelentingly terrifying place in which only through you can they gain clarity and protection or to help them identify and heal their wounds so that they can become stronger and learn to trust and rely on themselves. How you proceed is all up to you. Two, a sharp person who's struggling emotionally is more likely to do something for which our Scorpio friends are quite famous. When they are frightened or angry, they may use your, their deep awareness of your most vulnerable places to tear you apart to such a degree that you will never, ever, ever come near them again. This is another reason we tend to instinctively fear shark people. On an atavistic level, we are aware that a shark person can see right into our inner darkness and could, if so moved, bring all those jagged little pieces out into the light where we would be forced to look at them and where other people could see them. When a shark person engages in this kind of destructiveness, they are usually trying to protect themselves. But it does also cost them relationships that would have been well worth hanging on to. The happiest shark people have learned to never use their knowledge of someone else's soft spots solely for the sake of hurting them, whether that's to get back at them for a perceived slight or to drive them away. So if you're a shark person and you notice a Scorpio-esque trend in your previous relationships, and what I mean by that is that your previous relationships aren't just in the past, the bridges to those relationships have been dynamited. It would serve you to begin pushing pause when you find yourself feeling afraid and are moving into attack and destroy mode. Wait until you've calmed down a little bit before deciding how to deal with a tricky relationship. And take some time to look at the facts and not what you assume to be true. When you're frightened or angry, your intuition is not going to work correctly. And this is true for all of us, not just shark people. And your assumptions are very often going to be wrong. Another point about the shark's sense of smell before we move on to talking about their other senses. Saying someone can smell blood in the water like a shark is often applied to the business world, to a cutthroat salesman or trader, for example, or to someone who works in acquisitions. If you can sense that another company is failing, you can swoop in at the exact right time to purchase the company and revamp it for your own benefit or destroy it if that would serve you better. Shark people tend to make excellent businessmen and women because they can use this ability to detect vulnerability to make really good money for themselves and their companies. This particular ability may really scare others, or it may cause other people to label the shark person as uncaring, but the shark person is really just excelling at the job they've been hired to do. So in addition to that incredible sense of smell, sharks can detect electricity. They possess special cells that sense the small electrical fields that all animals create when their muscles contract. Because a wounded fish flopping around erratically is going to create more electricity than a healthy fish just, you know, gliding along, this is another way that sharks sense their prey. So here again, we find the ability of shark people to be a natural healer. They can often sense energy flow in people, and they have a notion about where a person's energy might be imbalanced or stagnating. This is one of the things that actually makes them really good yoga practitioners and yoga teachers. The, they can sense where people need to change their alignment or what's going on in their bodies as they're moving. On top of this, sharks can sense the Earth's electromagnetic field, which scientists believe they use to determine direction and to migrate long distances without getting lost. In a shark person, what is created is this uncannily accurate sense of what to do to get where, what choice to make, what path to take. Now again, this is only going to function when they're calm, but when they're calm, it's incredible. It may seem to the casual observer that the shark person just has crazy amounts of luck, but it isn't that. It is a deep, deep knowing that the shark person probably can't even put into words. They just know what to do and their actions tend to lead them to success, even in the most impossible scenarios. A shark's skin provides yet another gift of sensing. There's a special row of cells running from head to tail on a shark's body that detects vibrations in the water. When a fish swims nearby, it displaces water and creates ripples. When these ripples hit the aforementioned cells, the shark receives information about the direction and the amount of movement of the prey. And this sense works up to 820 feet, 250 meters away. Because of this, sharks can sense prey and pursue it even in total darkness. 
So here again, we have yet another way of sensing someone's vibe, as if shark people weren't already sensitive enough. More, you guys can see why sharks are such incredible hunters. They are designed for it. By extension, shark people are also consummate hunters. When they decide they want something, they tend to have a real, relatively easy time connecting with it. It's as though they're guided right to it. And in fact, they are. A large part of this has to do with the fact that shark people aren't as bogged down with the, the warm fuzzies as a lot of the rest of us. As we talked about earlier, shark people often appear to have a rather ruthless outlook, as a rule putting the pursuit of their own needs above the needs of others. And this is not a bad thing. A lot of us could do with a dose of this sort of selfishness, which is not actually selfishness at all, but self-respect. In essence, shark people don't spend a lot of time thinking that they shouldn't have what they want because it's some way inconveniences someone else. They know they're deserving of good things, and this openness to having their needs satisfied is one of the many things that allows them to so easily attain what they want. So many of us don't get what we want, not because we're not intended to have it, but because we're standing in our own way. We're convinced that we don't deserve it, or that if we are happy, it somehow hurts others. Shark people don't tend to have this problem. Where shark people do run into trouble is when they don't trust their intuition, assuming they're in a calm place when they tune into it. Again, all bets are off when their emotions are running high. When they are calm, shark people are so ridiculously, insanely intuitive that it can actually scare them, particularly if they grew up in families that seriously frown on this sort of thing. Their ability to see the vulnerability in others so clearly, the inner wounds and darkness that we, we really, really struggle to hide, can really freak people out, not to mention scaring the pants off the shark person themselves. Because this is so frightening, they may shut this part of themselves down and attempt to rely solely on logic, which never works. Or they may clearly sense woundedness in someone and have trouble believing it because the other person seems okay and says all the right things and we're told to trust what people say and do. This is where they wind up in situations where they're betrayed or abandoned. And with regard to attaining our desires, well, you know, most of us are raised to believe that we should do things in a logical, responsible fashion rather than just trusting our guts and leaping. The sharp person may have been raised to believe that their entire way of being is foolhardy or in the worst case is sinful and in an effort to maintain their family or societal connections, may ignore their intuition and do what they feel they are supposed to do. But the shark person doesn't stop being what they are just because others are frightened of them or because they're frightened of themselves. Their lives are set up only to work when they trust themselves and their intuitive vibes, no matter how crazy it may seem. What's really interesting here is that even though to most people it looks like the shark person is always just following some wild inner knowing, there's more to it than that. Shark people may be flawlessly intuitive, but they don't just dive into things will he nil he. What you don't see is all the obsession and rumination and analysis that happens before they take any sort of leap or that occurs during their active pursuit of what they're wanting. Sharks may have up to 3,000 teeth at a time. And even those sharks that don't use their teeth, like whale sharks, constantly grow multiple rows of replacements. Some sharks may lose and replace up to 30,000 teeth in their lifetime. Metaphysically, teeth represent chewing things over. Our bodies are fabulously metaphorical, guys. Analyzing a situation from multiple angles to determine how to proceed. If you're the kind of person who struggles with decision making because you're afraid of making the wrong one, or if you continuously beat yourself up for your actions and think you ought to have done something else, it's a good bet you have issues with your teeth and gums. And here we have a creature that is constantly growing new teeth. Shark people are constantly thinking about something, analyzing it, turning it over, breaking it down into its essential components so it can be more easily understood and the knowledge more easily used. It may look like they are operating solely out of instinct, and instinct will guide them, but they aren't just a walking gut sense. There is a thinking person in there who wants to know everything about whatever's occupying their attention at the time. So let's go back to our Scorpios for a second. Scorps are known for being obsessive about things, fixated. But what you're really seeing here in most cases is passion. When something interests them, they will dive deeply into it, commit to it wholeheartedly 
wholeheartedly. There is no halfway anything with a Scorpio or with a shark person. And what this looks like really is examining every aspect of it, learning it inside out, consuming it. This is equivalent to a shark person really sinking their teeth into something. For example, if you're a shark person who's decided to learn how to surf, you aren't just going to surf on occasional weekends, and you aren't just going to buy a board of second hand of unknown quality. You're going to get the right board and the right wetsuit, and when you do start surfing, you're going to do it every freaking day, as much as you can, until that passion takes you to the next level and you become damn good at it, an expert, or until you have wrung every ounce of joy and learning out of it and your passion is sparked by something else. Shark people need to have an outlet for their passions and for their need to be constantly immersed in something. Another thing going on here is the fact that most sharks never enter a true state of sleep because if they stop moving, they will suffocate. Movement is what pushes water over their gills and delivers oxygen. Shark people are restless physically and restless mentally. They need to have something occupying them in order to remain healthy. So these are the folks who are always tapping a foot or pacing or who have to get up and do something every five minutes or who simply lead really active lives and absolutely cannot tolerate boredom. There has to be something for them to do, to think about, to turn over and over in their minds or they'll go nuts. Everything about the shark contributes to it being the apex predator that it is. Not only does it have all of those incredible senses and an internally renewed mouthful of sharp teeth, but its whole body is geared towards economic energy usage so that it can maximize speed and stealth. The torpedo-like shape of its body reduces drag, enabling it to zoom through the water with little resistance, meaning that it can bring more power to the bite that will seize its prey. Two, sharks have skeletons made of cartilage, which is not only more flexible than bone, but lighter. So less energy is required for the shark to move. They really are a study in efficiency and economy. When a shark person really comes into their own, when they really learn to trust themselves, very little drama is required to get them what they want. And they're probably not fans of your drama, by the way. That is the quickest trip to boredom for a shark person. When shark people go after what they want, they probably thought it to death first, but as far as the actual physical process of going there, it probably occurred pretty uneventfully, with the shark person just moving effortlessly from point A to point B, no drama involved. Where the shark person can get into trouble and fall short is when they let themselves get overwhelmed with anger. Anger is toxic to shark people. This doesn't mean they should never get angry. Anger is every bit as sacred an emotion as love. But if they don't deal with sources of anger in their lives and find a way to let that anger go, or if they carry rage from old wounds, they are not going to be able to accurately hear their intuition and move through life accordingly. Where other fish rely on gas-filled swim bladders for buoyancy to keep themselves at a certain depth in the water, Sharks rely on an oil-filled liver, and this liver takes up to 30% of their body mass. The liver's a big deal. If the liver's unhealthy, the shark won't be able to control its depth, either rising too close to the surface or sinking too close to the ocean floor. It also won't be able to hunt with any accuracy. In the human body, the liver is one of the first places that we store anger, particularly around experiences that make us feel like a victim. It is also where we store anger at people for not behaving in the way we think that they should, and most of us have plenty of ideas about how we think people should behave. To maintain your emotional equilibrium as a shark person, it is imperative that you pay attention to when you're feeling angry and you deal with those feelings instead of stuffing them down or letting them hound you day in and day out. How do we deal with anger or any other emotion? We feel it for precisely what it is without trying to think it away, telling ourselves we shouldn't have these feelings, or trying to make them stop. We just surrender completely to the experience of the emotion and stay there until it dissipates. Now, note that I said feeling, not acting. This is about sitting with your emotion and feeling it, not taking it out on other people. A lot of shark people are afraid of their own intensity and their own cold-seeming single-mindedness. And they are often especially afraid of their anger, concerned that if they let themselves really feel it, then they will hurt someone. But if they don't feel it, it's going to begin crowding up their internal space. Physically, their liver is likely to be impacted, and emotionally, they are going to begin feeling as though they're sinking. 
there's going to be a lot of fear and a lot of confusion and this is where we make poor decisions. This is where we ruin relationships that could have been wonderful and fulfilling over the long term or where we do hurt those that we care about or wound those who come to us for help. This is where we become depressed because as powerful as we are, we feel powerless when it comes to this source of anger. We may then begin making decisions in a conscious attempt to gain that power back, but it's never enough because it doesn't address the real issue. Intuition functions best in the presence of calm and with an attitude of non-attachment. We have released the need for things to go a specific way, knowing that if we just trust ourselves, we'll end up where we're supposed to be and all will somehow be well. Whatever intuition tells us to do, we can do without hesitation. When we are angry and refusing to let that anger process and release, we tend to be attached to outcomes that appear to deliver justice or vengeance. And we have trouble honoring intuitive guidance that appears to let the author of our anger off the hook. So instead of allowing ourselves to move forward with equanimity, we wind up stuck and seething, waiting for an outcome that is probably not going to happen or that may not happen in the way that we expect. Not looking at our sources of anger will really keep us from growing. And anger can be a wonderful tool for growth. When we examine our anger, we begin to see how we feel powerless in our lives. And it's not until we understand how and why we feel powerless that we can become truly powerful in the kind of way that leads to the happiest possible life and the greatest positive impact upon the world. If we don't examine our anger, we tend to live a relatively shallow existence, never really challenging ourselves to grow or see what we're really capable of being and accomplishing. For a shark person, the difference between leading a healthy, fulfilling life and a stressful, empty one really is whether or not they choose to face their anger and let it go. So I hope this has given you guys a good understanding of Shark, but if you would like further information, you are welcome to schedule a session with me. I work with people all over the world to help them understand the unique messages of their animal totems and spirit guides, and also to help with physical and emotional healing, dream interpretation, figuring out what you're here to do with yourself in this lifetime, and about a billion other things. And I would love to work with you as well. This is what I do for a living, and it's awesome. So if you're interested in working with me, you can visit my website, www.ravenlightholistichealing.com. It'll tell you exactly what I do, what to expect, what I charge, how to book a session with me, and all that good stuff. And please be sure to check out my FAQ page before emailing me with questions, as the answer may already be at your fingertips. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram at Raven Light Holistic Healing. Make sure you look for Raven Light Holistic Healing and not Jordana Van because I do not respond to requests on my personal page. And while I do understand that you might like my professional opinion on your spiritual situation, I do not provide this outside of a formal session under any circumstances. So if you're interested in my opinion or guidance, please book a session. Again, I would love to work with you. Have a gorgeous day, my darlings. Cheers.